Once Upon a Dream, Interlude. A castle lay asleep. A kingdom lay asleep. The people, horses, mice, and even fountains and gnats lay asleep. A lush lay over everything, and all seemed sweet and peaceful at first. Beautiful, ancient-looking, brambles protected the sleepers within, and occasionally bloomed pink honey-scented roses. There were only two groups of things that didn't sleep. One was the dead. The other was a trio of concerned-looking fairies who flitted around the castle and watched over the sleepers, especially the royal princesses. Aurora lay perfectly, beautifully, hands clasped below her ribs like she was on constant prayer. Her lips were parted, her eyes rolled. Something was happening in what was supposed to be a dreamless, swift sleep. Collapsed in an ungainly heap on the floor next to her was Prince Philip, the one who was supposed to wake her up and end the whole thing. Instead, the silly boy had fallen his, him, asleep himself. The first hint the fairies had s that something was terribly amiss, and then the people had started dying. Flora, the fairy watching over Aurora, had a worried, weary hand to her head. Her strange flowing vestments of red drifted sadly around her like mists rather than cloth. Her face appeared mostly human except up close. There was a strange serenely behi serenity behind all the normal seeming emotions. Her companions, a plump little pixie in blue and a, and a hammered in green, floated in from their rounds. All's quiet, Merryweather, the one in blue said. I mean, they're all still asleep, so of course they're quiet. She's doing it again, Flora pointed at Aurora's face. For a split second, the beautiful princess's features twisted up in agony or upset. They recomposed themselves almost immediately. Fauna, the one in green, moaned in despair. I cannot believe this is happening. We were supposed to save the princess and everyone, not just hand them over to Maleficent. We're sure they're, we're sure they're all in there? Sadly, yes. How did she ever plan all this? Merriweather demanded. I don't think she planned it, Flora said, sighing. I think she just took advantage of the situation. I think she always sort of uh, had a backup plan in case she was ever killed. If I'm ever killed, I want you two to resurrect me, Merriweather said with a humph. If she actually had friends, she could have done the same. Be kind, Fauna admonished her, swooshing back and forth in the air. If she actually had friends, maybe she wouldn't have turned out so nasty and evil. And besides, she added reluctantly, if she actually had friends, we'd be in worse trouble now. Worse? How could it be worse? We can't wake up anyone here. Not with the smell, a spell, not with foxglove, not with holy water. We have not rolled out everything, Flora snapped. We haven't tried everything. True. Have you tried kissing anyone yet? Merriweather asked archly. Flora gave her a withering look. A horrible, piercing cry ran out through the castle. Oh no, not another one, Fauna cried in alarm. Immediately, the three fairies shrank into red, blue, and green balls of, of light and went whisking through the air, will-o'-wisps on a mission. They streaked through the bailey, the courtyard, the bedrooms, and the chapel until they found the source of the scream, Lady Astrid, asleep at her needlework, her face a mask of horror and fear. The three balls quickly resolved into human-sized figures who gathered up her up in their arms. Fauna kept the woman, woman's head upright. Merriweather grabbed a cloak and crumpled it up to try to prevent what came next. Flora regarded the dreamer with a critical eye. All seemed fine at first, and then thick, dark blood began to soak the lady's gown over where the heart was. Merriweather immediately pushed the cloak into the wound, pressing it down with her hands as hard as she could. Fauna closed her eyes and invoked the healing power of the woods, an ancient, usually infallible, incantation. Flora drew symbols in the air in her naked, with her naked ring finger, trailing gold behind it in a strange three-dimensional dimensional rune. It was no use. Lady Astrid screamed and screamed and screamed. She was somehow aware, despite the strange half-life she lived between dream and sleep, that her death was coming, and it was unavoidable. Her cries were of pain and fear and anger and horror and everything terrible the fairies had ev never felt themselves in human quantities. The blood came faster until it was gushing through the cloth like a fountain, heaving with each pump of the heart, and then the heart stopped. The silence of the sleeping castle was complete and utter once more. Merriweather dropped the bloody rags in sadness that disguised, disgust, 
disguised itself as disgust. Silver tears formed in Fauna's eyes as she stroked the dead woman's hair back up under her wimple. Flora clenched her fists in frustration. Damn that Maleficent, she swore, using the worst human phrase she could think of. She's worse than we ever could have imagined. She's murdering, life-draining, soul leech. And why these two? Merriweather asked philosophically. These ones seem harmless, and really, that peasant was quite literally a nobody. Nice man, but a strange choice. Well, Fauna said softly, both are equally dead now, noble or not, and Maleficent has bought herself another hour. Only two more before her holdover rose becomes complete, Meriwether added. I mean, Aurora. We have to try again, Flora insisted. I felt like that we actually did something that time, that we reached her a little. It's all we can do, Fauna agreed. So let's try it again. The three fairies held hands, closed their eyes, preparing to dream a fairy dream.